Hey everybody, my name is Maria. I'm an intuitive reader here. I've had a couple of requests. One is several of my viewers have asked if I could break this down by a zodiac. And I'm like, sure, sure. I'm, I don't know, I've never done it before. So we'll see if it's uh, how it turns out. If it does turn out and you feel like it resonates with you or you, you found a message somewhere, uh, in this next upcoming read, uh, please leave a comment, a positive one, preferably, <laughs> and I will be more than happy to continue to do individual zodiac signs. If I don't get a lot of comments, it's okay. Um, I'll probably just go back to the collective read as I did. Um, very excited about opportunities such as this to expand my talents, gifts, and abilities. I uh, just want to make sure that I'm supporting you and make sure that this resonates with you. That being said, I'm on Sagittarius, the Sag. All right, Sag, I'm reading for you for the week of January 11th through the 20th. Maybe if the cards would like to come out and join me for this reading, I'd be super appreciative. Spare, what do you have for Sagittarius from January 11th through the 20th? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. What else? Okay, that one wants to come out. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. I normally don't do reversals. I'm not a fan of reversals, uh, mostly because um, they can be tricky, right? They're tricky little, tricky little guys. Um, in this case, I'm going to. I'll tell you why in a minute. It just feels right. I have to kind of trust my own intuition. And this came out in the reverse, so I'll do this one as well. I need a few more cards, please. Reading for Sag. Hey, Spirit, a couple more cards. What? I don't know if that one's supposed to come out. Nope. Sagittarius, 11 through the 20th. Sagittarius, 11 through the 20th. Thank you. Okay. 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 Got, you got a lot more. Okay. A lot more than two. Thank you. Quite a bit. You're going to get a lot of bonus readings, Sag. You lucky devils. Uh, bottom of the deck is the Ten of Cups. It did come up in the reverse, but again, I don't like doing the reversals, but we'll see how the message portrays and if it resonates with you. Okay. Lots of cards. Lots and lots and lots and lots. Okay, I'm just going to go with those on the bottom. Okay. You get a full... You get a full spread, y'all. Uh, overall energy, uh, including the Nine of Cups, right, is the Sun card. Whoops, excuse me. It wasn't in reverse. This is accurate. It's in the upright. And it's my baby, naked baby on a horse card, which I never quite understood. But apparently the author sees naked people <laughs> as spiritual beings, cherubs, and angels, you know, whatever. So... It's some naked cherub on a horse riding around in the sun. So, and there's, and I think sunflowers, there's a lot of sunflowers in this. And the sunflowers are representing enlightenment and spirituality and healing and all that. It's, it's all the good stuff, all the good stuff. So it's the happiest card in the deck. So you have the nine of cups and the sun card. Not too bad, Sag. Let me tell you. So here we go. Top of the deck. We have temperance. This is Michael the Archangel. That's who this is in this card. And if you can see, he's got one foot in the water and one foot on solid ground. So water represents emotion, right? And it's balanced. He's got a balance between head and heart, right? That's what's happening here. And it's a balance of giftedness and 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 he's, he's balancing the situation. That's your entry card for the week, balance. Right below that, because this is how I read tarot. I don't know why, just it's, I'm weird. I can't help it. Is the Two of Wands? The Two of Wands is is this pre-emperor in the purple um, robe. Purple is royal in in any language, uh, but he's holding the world in his hands, and he has two wands. He can go left. He can go right. He can he can do anything. He can go to Japan. He can go to the Indies. It doesn't matter. He's evaluating all of his skills, gifts, and abilities, he's at a place where he's making a decision, which way am I gonna go? That's what's happening in this card. Below that is the lovers, or excuse me, my apologies, two of cups in reverse. Don't know if this is somebody who is refusing 
or was going to give a cup to somebody and then refused it, or they refused it, we don't know. We're in the third card. Next card in the second row is uh, Page of Swords. So Swords, again, in this card specifically, is an incoming truth. And it can be a bit bitey. Swords, of course, can cut. Uh, but honestly, they're also truth. It's And Pages are deliverers of communication. So maybe you've had an honest communication, uh, tit for tat, bitey conversation, a little bit heated maybe. Um, but it's uh, Pages communication. An honest communication, right? Right below that is anxiety. Lots and lots of anxiety. This person, and I love this card, but it is kind of funny because um, it's not funny, haha. -ha. It's just weird because she's wrapped up in what I think like toilet paper bondage maybe, and she's not even connected to a sword. She could get out of this anytime she wanted to, but she's stuck in her head. She can't make a decision. She can't, she doesn't know which way to go. She's got a lot of anxiety. And I just went on a rant in the previous um, video talking a little bit about how we can think, we, we try to think our way into a solution or into action or a change. We try to think our way into change. And that never, ever, ever happens. Ever. <laughs> I don't know if I can make myself more clear ever. So I can go buy the the gym clothes, the brand new $200 tennis shoes, buy the trainer, join the gym, get my little water bottle, um, show up at the gym, have a camel unfiltered with the Coors Light in the parking lot with a row of Oreos. All I've done is made a decision. That's it. All I did is make a decision to join a gym. I've taken zero action. In fact, the only action I've taken is negative. So the reality is, is that the only way that change occurs is through action. The irony is if I show up at the gym, regardless of what my head says, because my head will be like, keep your ass in bed. <laughs> it's cold outside. You don't want to sweat in front of all those people. Just don't, just don't go. It's warm here. It, you know, you get an extra 30 minutes of sleep, right? That's what your head, your, my head's trying to kill me, by the way. I call it my itty bitty shitty committee some days. So I feel like that's what this person's dealing with. They're going back and forth and back and forth and they're full of anxiety and they're thinking about this 24 seven, 24, but there's, there's no action. Zero actions happening. Zero. Right below it is a king of swords. I find it interesting because buttoned up at the front of this was the page of swords, right? So the king of swords, I think, is sending communication to somebody um, about getting out of their head. They're going to take some action and they're going to have a conversation with somebody and they're going to man up, woman up, and own this, whatever this is, and have a conversation. I feel like, again, um, it's that change only occurs with action. So once that person makes that decision and follows through with it, all of a sudden, I'm going to the gym every day, I am enjoying it, I look forward to it, and at the end of the day, if I miss it, my body and my mind are negatively reminding me to get my tail back to the gym. I'm feeling it in my body, I'm, I'm sluggish, my, I'm losing muscle, right? It muscle masses, you can just tell, your definition changes. So my point is, that's what this person, this king, is a, is aware of. And we're only in the second row, y'all. That's what this king is aware of. This king is aware that cha change must occur. Cha it has to. Consistently needs to happen or life won't be the same. Okay, Sag, we're halfway through the week. Starting off with the emperor. The emperor are four kings, all four kings. They run the show. So in the Book of Tarot, there's only four kings, right? And the emperor has embodied and, and possesses and has made balance all four kings. So when there's imbalance in a relationship or in, in growth, just in general, you might have been, you might be uh, a king in cups. You can handle love and you're a mature, responsible adult and you can have conversations that make sense and there's no drama or arguing, etc. for my way and there's no immaturity, it's pretty balanced. But in maybe finance, they're a little bit impulsive, right? So they're a knight. So they haven't gotten to the king level. They haven't mastered that. This is the emperor. These are all four kings managed well, mastered well. So what's that say to me is either you, Sag, are mastering something or somebody 
that you maybe were in a relationship with at some point. It, clearly not now, clearly, because all up until this point, nobody's made a decision to do anything. They've just thought about it a lot. Um, but whoever you were in a relationship is trying to gain the strength to come forward and change this, whatever this is. Rariah beneath that is the the two of pentacles. So again, pentacles are commitments, their obligations, their opportunities, and two is a decision. Somebody's made the decision. They've made it or on the verge, but I think in this case, they're making it now as we speak this week. Right below that is the justice card. Love this card, love this card. Uh, it has a little scale in it. We talked a little bit about balance, right? And the justice card is, and it's a major arcana card. And so when you see a major arcana card, it's when the divine, your Sherpa guide, your team, your higher power, your God, your tribe, whatever you call it, is showing up and making balance where there was an imbalance, right? Um, that is the central line in, in the spread. So when I look at the central line in the spread, and again, you've got an extra row on the bottom. So this is an extended read, but, when you, when you look at this, that's the center. The center is, and it's not just a decision about a relationship. This is a life change. That's what this is. When you, see, when you see the cards surrounding them, that's what the anxiety is about. If this person makes a change, and only you know what that change is, but when they make that decision to step away from garbage behavior or deceptive whatever, they are pivoting their lifestyle. They're turning off a whole portion of what fed them fed their ego, fed their nature all this time. So they're walking away from that. And the reason why I say that is at the top of the next, top of the next row is the Eight of Cups. So again, I'm gonna say it again, cause I like what I said. I don't know where it came from. My, the first time I read it, but it makes sense. I've known a lot of happy, uh, healthy, balanced marriages that at the highest apex of their marriage at 20 plus years is seven cups. Like they have invested in, in they've gotten to the seven cup level. This is eight cups and this person's walking away because they want their 10, they want their 10 of cups. That's what they want. And so they're gonna turn around away from an eight of cup and this is a done, not looking back, turn into a pillar of salt. If I do, they're not gonna revisit this. This is a d done deal. So in the middle of the spread, was I'm sitting on the fence, I need to make a decision to, I've made a decision and I'm walking away. And we don't really know, I can ask what the cups represent. It could be a prior relationship. It could be multiple relationships. It could be commitment issues. It could be addiction. We're not sure. Whatever they hold dear to them, it could be anything. Their lifestyle, right? Because that's what I said. This is a lifestyle change. Whatever they hold dear to them, they're walking away from. Next card underneath is the four cups in reverse. So the four of cups in reverse is um, in the upright is the divine handing this person a gift, right? A wish fulfillment of a relationship. And the person who's sitting on the, uh, under the tree pouting like a six-year-old um, would rather prefer the three karmic cups <laughs> that are shallow and probably full of chocolate milk and not full of this amazing, you know, whatever that the divine is handing him that's gonna be healthy for him. Um, he's refusing it, he doesn't want it. And so in the reverse is he's, re he's reconsidering and he wants to come back to it. He's like, maybe it wasn't so bad. Maybe he got his ass bit by the, <laughs> the three, sorry, or her. It could be her, I just read energy. Just forgive me, I do this all the time, but the pronouns don't mean anything. But the, um, the cups on the bottom is, it was once denied. And because it's in the reverse, I am reconsidering that. It wasn't so bad. I'll take that, that spinach, even though I don't like it. You know, that's the feeling. Right beneath, <laughs> I can't make it up. Right beneath that card. So I'll hold these up and you'll get a better understanding. Is the six of cups. I love this card. It's a nostalgia card. So this is somebody you've had a relationship with. I don't know about romantic but they think fondly of you. So the Six of Cups is this lovely little human being or thing here is, is offering his little tiny cup of beautiful flowers to this gorgeous little person here. And he's telling her how much he appreciates, admires, um, is attracted. He wants to court her. This is a court card. 
I'm, I miss you and he's nostalgic and he's reminiscing and, or she or whomever, and they have fond memories of you and they want to come back. In the corner of the card, I don't know if you can see this, but in, in this version of Six of Cups, is this person having, is walking away. So this person made a decision. This is the three that I promised I'd show you in the story. This person makes a decision to come back and revisit something and he's walking away. She, whomever. Final, ending, close of the week. We have the devil in reverse. Okay, ironically, I don't know if you know much about Tarot, but these two individuals here are also the same two in the lover's deck. However, in the devil, they're tied. They were meant to be, they were divinely orchestrated and placed together by the divine. And then toxicity came in. It could be codependency, it could be addiction, it could be lying, cheating, stealing, gambling, fill in the blank. It's, it becomes toxic. It becomes, it, it gets twisted right? As it should. And like when we put ourselves before anything and we abuse something or somebody, we abuse a relationship and it became toxic. In the reverse is it wants to be repaired. It, 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 they're the person in this spread or whomever is working on their inner stuff. Their, you can call it inner child, shadow work, introspective, whatever. They're evaluating character defects, right? And they're identifying personal issues they have in relationships where they're not bringing their best self forward, period. I don't care what it, you how it looks on the 3D. The 5D is I'm plugging every hole in my body in my Swiss cheese body with garbage that isn't fulfilling. It's going to dissolve and make a bigger hole, which I'm going to have to shove more crap in to fill. And it's it's masking the real problem, which is heal the freaking hole. How about that? Let's not stuff it with shit. Let's just fix it. That's the issue. So this is what this means, is this person wants to fix the Swiss cheese. Why do I say that? Beneath that card is a five of pentacles. They don't want to be left in the cold and somebody's moving forward. Because I think your spiritual team, your higher power, your, your divine God, whomever you call your czar of the heavens, showed up for you a while ago, probably during prayer, which is what I get, is you cried out and you're like, fix a situation. Fix a situation. Fix a si I could keep going. Fix a situation. And and uh, it was answered. So this person knows you're moving forward and they don't want to be left behind. They don't want to be left in the cold. And the final card is the hermit and it's in the reverse. In the upright, somebody sits in isolation. They are, they are literally put aside, they put themselves aside and they do that introspective work. They work on themselves. The hermit in reverse is they're done doing it. They're coming out of hibernation. They're going to join you. They're looking for you. They're coming in to have a conversation, which leads us to the overall feeling. Nine of cups and the sun. So pretty cool read so far, Sage. Let's figure out, I wanna know a little bit about um, who are we talking about? Who are we talking about? Um, spirits, can we tell, can you tell me a little bit more? I can put my glasses on y'all. I'm that age. I'm that age where I have readers every five minutes. I have like 30 on a pair at my car, <laughs> in my desk, in my computer bag. I just have them everywhere. Uh, Spirit, tell me a little bit more about who are we speaking about? Who is this emperor? Tell me more about the emperor. Give the viewer some understanding of who the emperor is. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, quite a few cards flew out too. Okay, so remember I was, okay, that's a meditation card. So this person, deep in meditation, this is their head, their brain, right? Their decision maker, they're turning it off. They're lying down and they're listening to their spirit team. They're evaluating and um, reviewing, they're meditating. They're trying to discern what in me needs to change. They had a relationship with you because this is your relationship spilled all over the ground that they're grieving. Not knowing they can turn around, pick up the same two cups that were over here, remember? Same exact two cups. They could come over and pick up the cups and bring them to you 
and clarify right the wrong. Last card defining who this is, they're sitting in judgment. Judgment isn't always bad, okay? It's um, rebirth, it's another word. So again, naked people and YouTube doesn't like it, but you, got, you get the idea. In the judgment card, the divine intercedes and is calling for a rebirth. He's calling his people forward, right? So the same thing here, he's calling this person to bring the crap he needs to work on and drop it, which is ironically at the bottom of the deck, dropping the burdens. This is my, the camel broke, or the straw that broke the camel's back. Not one more, can't carry one more wand. It is too burdensome. I'm done. So whatever this is, he's done, or she's done, or it's done, he's done, it's done. And so this is your message, Sag. Whoa. Lots of stuff going on. But the overall energy, again, the sun and the nine. So this is, you know, I I, I find it ironic, not ironic. It's kind of um, spiritually led. We'll say that. When I start a reading talking about the challenges in change and that change is inevitable and conflict is inevitable and we can't get to resolution without conflict we can't fix things unless we deal with conflict and we close and the whole thing is about conflict <laughs> the whole thing is about growth and the whole the whole message so if i ever had two words of wisdom for you is just sit in your canoe and wait and there's a whole canoe, canoe theory my thing on meditation is sometimes i struggle right i i'm sitting there i'm trying really hard to to concentrate um and I, and the grocery list comes into play or some bill i have to do or oil change you know like my my to-do list shows up and i'm like i didn't invite you to this meditative state go away and so it's harder it's it gets it's getting easier but the thing that helped me the most is i'm i'm from south dakota little tmi I'm from South Dakota originally when I was a little kid, and we had creeks all throughout South Dakota. It's the most beautiful state. Forgive me, but that's my opinion. I'm allowed it. And we used to go fishing, throw a pole on the side of the creek, catch brown trout, rainbow trout. It was fun. Had a lot of, a lot of great memories. However, um, when I go back home in my mind, it's quiet. I hear a creek. I hear the wind. And it's just me and the divine sitting in this canoe going down the creek. I have no oars in this creek. I'm not trying to control where this where this canoe is going, I've turned the canoe over. I can only go one direction. To the right of me is a bank, to the left of me is a bunch of trees. I can't get lost. It's just me and this canoe and this little tiny creek. Um, the nice thing is, is that when I mentally turn over everything, I ask the divine, what is supposed to be in this canoe with me? And then I don't bring it with me. It just shows up in the canoe. So when I have conversations during the day that are unexpected, unintentional, not on my calendar, never were, and they just show up in my life, there might be a message there I need to listen to, or somebody I need to help, or this person's very important. The divine brought this person into my life for a purpose. I need to learn the lesson or help them find the lesson. That's how my life works today. I don't go bumping my canoe into somebody and jumping into their boat. You know, I don't do that anymore. I don't need to fix them. I just stay in my canoe. And when I do that, life unfolds. Sag, that's the message I have for you heavily today is let this message unfold to the person this is impacting. Um, if, you, if you feel like you're this person, sit in that canoe and ask your higher power, what is it that you need to focus on to get rid of, to improve your, to restore, I think it's restoration of relationships around you so you can be the best and highest version of yourself. And did you see that? Did you see that? I'm telling you, that is freaking weird. That was confirmation. Whoa. <laughs> All right. If you felt this was enjoyable or at least entertaining, please comment, positive things, uh, subscribe and share. Maybe you have a Sagittarius in your life that you feel could benefit from this reading. Um, but that's how this message gets out and all around the world and I get to impact more people and help them become their highest version. So love and light to you and hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Take care.